Hey guys, as promised, today's video is an interior detail that follows up on my previous exterior detail on my own Alfa Romeo Brera. Now as a pre-warning, I'm letting you know right now that it's not a badly soiled or dirty interior simply because I don't let it get that way. So if you're looking for a disgusting interior transformation, this won't be the video for you. But if you are interested in knowing how I go about performing an extensive and thorough complete interior surface clean, both safely and methodically, this may be the video for you. On average, I give my Alpha this same thorough clean every year or two, which actually plays a large part in ensuring that it stays in this condition all year round, with just some very basic occasional maintenance, comprising of a vacuum, light dusting, and an interior wipe down, and really nothing more. And although the interior really doesn't look all that bad, you'll hopefully see at the end that there'll still be quite a noticeable difference once all the trims and materials are deep cleaned and rejuvenated to an almost like new condition. I'll just briefly run through the equipment and products I'll be using, which includes my somewhat new bar hot wave extractor that since the seats are leather, I'll just be using for the carpet and mats. My somewhat older faster domino wet and dry vacuum with twin motors and double filtration that I'll be using during the dusting and the dry vacuuming stage. There's also my little Vaporetto steamer I'll be using to sanitize and also clean some certain intricate areas and the Metrovac Blaster I'll be using to both clean and dry the mats and carpet. In addition, I'll be using some cleaning brushes, microfiber cloths, all-purpose cleaner, leather cleaner, a window cleaner, and protecting it all in the end with an interior coating. Now whether it's my own car or a customer's car, I always start with a pre-inspection to gain a better understanding of the interior's condition. So I'm looking at things like the existing level of dirt and grime, and if there's any areas that may need some extra attention or a different approach. I'll then remove any personal items, the car mats, and any rubber or plastic inserts that may get in the way or are better cleaned separately outside the interior. I tend to start with the car mats as they're usually the dirtiest area of the car, and it also gives them time to dry after shampooing. Though I'm starting with the parcel shelf here, using the Metro Blaster to clean it, and also a soft bristle brush to help loosen and dislodge any stubborn particles. The thing with parcel shelves, or really any delicate trims, such as headliners, and that awful fake felt carpet that's also lining my boot area, is that the less you touch them, the better. So in the case such as mine, where they really aren't all that dirty, it's best to take a less is best approach, such as using compressed air to blow them clean, which is still extremely effective, but more importantly, extremely gentle, even in comparison to vacuuming. I also recommend avoiding more aggressive brushes on these types of surfaces, as although it's fine and safe to use them on a quality carpet, they really tend to create that fuzzy fluff on this cheaper felt imitation carpet often making things even worse. The Metro Blaster was also used to blow out the car mats, which is extremely effective and powerful for that purpose. You'll find that if you can't blow out the dirt with compressed air, you'll most likely not be able to vacuum it out either, and it will need to be shampooed and extracted out. I do also at times use compressed air to blow out certain interiors or areas that I can't reach or access. But the issue with using compressed air inside the vehicle is that it more or less just shifts the dirt to another area and ultimately it really does need to be vacuumed. Though as I mentioned it can be handy to blow out trap dirt in hard to reach areas. With the looser dirt removed I then proceeded to pre-treat the mats with my all-purpose cleaner which is CarPro Inside, giving them a nice even coat and then using a slightly stiffer upholstery brush to work it in and help break down the tougher grime.
This was followed by injecting hot water into the mats with my extractor while sucking it up at the same time. The benefit of a true hot water extractor is that it really expands and opens up the carpet's fibers with its heat allowing for a more thorough clean without the need of using more aggressive cleaners. And with my bar extractor in particular, it does heat up the water up to 90 degrees Celsius. So it has the added bonus of killing most bacteria and sanitizing the carpet or fabric at the same time. I tend to firstly do a wet set of passes over the mats, followed by a dry set without adding any additional hot water. And then I'll basically repeat the process again or until the liquid I'm extracting runs clean and clear until the mats both look and feel clean. This process is based on always removing or extracting out the previous liquid before I add any more, which ensures that the carpet or fabric doesn't get oversaturated. The truth is that you really do need that liquid to effectively clean carpet and upholstery. And I know from previous experience that many detailers starting out are afraid to get the carpet or seats wet and really don't use enough liquid which does reflect in the poor results they achieve. So don't be afraid to use your cleaners and water a little more liberally. Just don't go overboard and always extract out what you've added before you add more. Once the mats were thoroughly clean and restored back to that rich black shade, they were blown out with the Metro Blaster's warm air to speed up the drying process before giving them some contrasting brush stripes and then placed aside to fully dry. I've discussed my personal philosophy and methods with interior cleaning in the past, which falls into two main categories, being dry cleaning and wet cleaning. Now it may be tempting to sometimes skip the dry cleaning part and move straight to the wet cleaning process with your interior cleaners, as ultimately it is more effective than dry cleaning and a lot quicker than doing both processes. However, you need to consider that most of the dry and looser grime is dirt and dust particles that when you introduce liquid to them, you're ultimately creating mud that does in fact have abrasive qualities and will scratch your interior surfaces, which does lead to them becoming dull, worn and damaged over time. So using a more gentle approach, where you firstly remove the majority of that looser dirt and dust before you introduce any liquids of any form, will in fact help preserve and maintain your car's interior trims looking like new for so much longer. I tend to work an area of the interior at a time in a top to bottom approach with my brush in one hand and my vacuum nozzle in the other sweeping the dust directly into the vacuum as I go. Once I get to the carpet I'll also give it a vacuum at the same time before moving on to the next area. This is really the main dry cleaning process which is basically dusting and then vacuuming the entire interior cabin which is basically preparation for the wet cleaning process that will follow, though I'll always give the cabin another quick final vacuum at the end, as there'll always be more dust and particles that will be dislodged as I continue to clean. Now in the boot area, I'm just going to vacuum, as it really doesn't need to be extracted. And as I mentioned before, the less you touch these cheaper felt carpets, the better. However, when I first purchased the car, I did in fact shampoo and extract out the boot along with every square inch of the car that was also steamed and completely sanitized. 
The truth is that I've done this process on every car I've ever bought, as I really can't enjoy being in that cabin until I know that every last bit of bodily fluid or grime from the previous owners has been completely removed, and that all the surfaces have been completely sanitized. I know that most of it is just for my own mental well-being, but it just feels so nice and comforting to know that the interior has been completely reset. Not to mention that it always just looks so much nicer and more vibrant when it's done right. Apart from dusting the seats, you'll find that most of the dirt particles love to settle in the tight seams. So using your fingers to push down and open up those seams with your vacuum nozzle in place will work very well at removing that trapped hidden dirt. I'll also be folding the seats up and down to get in every tight area around the cabin and lifting and opening up all the various compartments to ensure that the dirt has no place to hide. With the dry cleaning process completed, I pretty much followed the same general section by section, top to bottom pattern approach for the next wet cleaning process. I'm actually using a leather cleaner called Cleanse for cleaning most of the interior surfaces, including the leather, vinyl and plastics. Now believe it or not, dedicated leather cleaners are really more or less just a gentle pH balanced or less concentrated formulations of your standard all-purpose cleaner. So even though this product is labelled as a leather cleaner, which it's actually fantastic as, I can still use it to clean just about any surface of the interior. And likewise, I could just further dilute my all-purpose cleaner and use that to clean the leather and really just about any other interior surface. So all I'm trying to say is that you shouldn't get too caught up about these specific dedicated cleaners for plastics, leather, carpet, fabrics and so on, as on the whole they really are quite similar in their core ingredients. And what really changes is their level of concentration, where you do want a little more for areas like your carpet, and a little less for areas like your leather. Now overall I really don't need a stronger or more aggressive cleaner for this particular interior. So the leather cleaner is actually a perfect strength that's more than capable for my car and the level of grime it needs to address. However, if the interior was badly soiled, then a stronger all-purpose cleaner concentration would perhaps be needed. I'll also let you know that this was my first time using Concourse Cleanse Leather Cleaner, and I have to say that this little 250ml bottle was unexpectedly deceptive, but in a good way. I honestly thought that 250ml wasn't going to be enough to do the whole interior from top to bottom. But as I discovered, it mixes the cleaner with air as you push down to create a really nice thick foam that actually makes it go so much further, being more like 500 mils or even more. And the other great thing that I discovered about it is that it wipes off with almost no residue left behind, which really is a huge plus in my book. Now I'm not too sure about its smell, which is a little strange and hard to describe. But the good thing is that it dissipates quite quickly, so it's really gone within an hour or two. For the smaller and more intricate areas and trims, I used a smaller soft bristle brush. But for the larger flat areas of the seats, I actually used a larger soft bristle leather brush. 
Once again, this is based on condition and what's really needed in this particular case. If the seats were quite dirty, I would have used a smaller brush and worked much smaller sections as that really would have been a quicker and more effective approach. But as the seats really aren't all that bad, I can use a larger brush and actually work larger areas which still works fantastically well and is a much quicker approach. You can think of it a little like how you'd correct your car's paint. If it was severely damaged, you'd have to work smaller sections and use more aggressive products and techniques. Whereas if the paint's not all that bad, you can use lighter pads and compounds as well as work larger sections, at least in general. Now I've discussed my method of cleaning both fabric and leather seats in separate videos if you do want a more comprehensive explanation of what I use, how I go about it and why. In the end, just about every surface of the cabin was cleaned using this method and product, with the exception of the glass, instrument screens and carpet, which I'll be cleaning separately. Now unfortunately, I do seem to be missing some footage that was most likely due to my camera battery dying at the wrong time, which was pretty much me using the steamer on a few surfaces, including the headliner, air vents and a couple of other intricate areas where steam was used to both clean and sanitize the surface. But apart from that, the majority of the cleaning really was using the leather cleaner on the small interior brush and treating every little surface as my mind went into automatic mode as it's something I've done so many times and it's kind of therapeutic in a way, especially when you're not on the clock and just detailing your own ride. Next was the shampooing and extraction of the carpet. 
In all honesty, it really was the very same method I used on the car's mats, with the only real difference being that you need to get into some awkward positions and always change up your technique to adapt to each and every car interior. So the carpets were given the same pre-treatment with CarPro inside all purpose cleaner, which was brushed and worked into the carpets prior to the hot water extraction. Once again I did a wet run of the extractor followed by a dry run and then repeated the process until the extraction liquid ran clear and the carpets looked and felt clean. Now one change I have made in the last couple of years is that I don't buy or use glass cleaners anymore and I just use my alcohol based panel wipe products such as Clarity that I'm using here to clean the glass. For me personally these products including CarPro Razor just work so much better than any dedicated glass cleaner I've ever used in the past and I've honestly almost tried them all. The other thing I changed is that I'm actually quite liberal and generous with the amount that I use, just like when I'm doing my final IPA wipe down on the car's paint. I've talked about glass being a real pain to get perfect in the past, but since I've adopted this technique using these particular cleaners and increasing the amount that I'm using, it's actually made the whole process so much more effective and easier to achieve that perfect finish. Now the cloths you use can also help with waffle weaves and shorter pile microfiber cloths generally being a better choice as they tend to lint less. But overall if you're just using quality microfiber cloths with one cloth for the first wet wipe and then a second cloth for the final dry buff seems to do the trick quite well.
So with the interior now completely clean, it's time to lay down some protection to both help protect and preserve the interior surfaces as well as make them so much easier to clean and maintain in the future. Now Capro leather really has been my interior coating of choice for quite a few years now as it's extremely durable and does do a fantastic job at protecting the various surfaces and making their upkeep so much easier. But today I'm actually using a slightly newer interior coating by Concours called Guardian. Now I have used this a couple of times so far but it'll be the first time on my own car. Now overall it really couldn't be more different to CarPro leather in its application, look, smell and consistency as well as its finish which I'll run through right now. I personally like to use it with a foam applicator and start off by adding a little more to the pad to get it primed. The greatest thing about Guardian is its super easy application and what's more, it doesn't have that off-putting solvent smell, but rather a light leather smell that I actually think is quite nice. The only thing you really need to do is just ensure you have a nice even application and add a few more drops as you move on to the next section. And although it really is sold as a leather coating, just like CarPro leather, you can really use it on almost all interior surfaces, such as leather, plastics, vinyl, metal, and even wood. Now overall you'll find that it's pretty much a self leveling coating so you really don't need to worry about wiping or leveling it down as long as you do apply it to a cool surface and out of direct sunlight. But after about 20 minutes or so which should actually be more than enough time to do a whole interior as it's just so speedy to use all you need to do is wipe down any excess product with a clean cloth and you're done. But as I mentioned, you will find that it pretty much self-levels without any streaks or patchy blotches and it really is such a pleasure to use. The thing that also really impressed me about it was the finish. Guardian leaves a truly matte finish that won't add any gloss at all to the leather or trims. But at the same time, it does add richness and saturation to the leather and trims, just making them look new and vibrant again. Now I haven't used it long enough to give you first hand results on durability but so far it's been holding up extremely great in the last couple of months I've been testing it. And it's claimed to last up to 12 months which would be fantastic to see as it's really ticked all the other boxes so far. I'll leave you with the rest of the footage and the final shots of the car's interior which I don't think the footage does true justice to how great the interior looked at the end which I think was actually better than the day I bought it over six years ago. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe to this channel to show your support for these videos and I'll see you guys soon.